In this presentation, we will take a look at social security and social security calculations. So here we're considering what will be the calculations for social security. Now remember that some of these numbers, we're going to give the numbers on in terms of what the social security is at the point in time. But note that the percentages are not as important right now for our purposes. What we want to know is what's the structure of this tax? How is it set up? And then we can look up the percentages at any given time. Now, Social Security percents shouldn't change all that often, but uh, they could be they could be subject to change. And but once we learn the type of um, tax, we can apply that anywhere. The reason Social Security will not change as much is that it does take uh, an, an act, a new law, to change the Social Security. Whereas when we think about the tax tables for um, the federal income tax, those are typically going to up, be updated often with the cost of living type of updates. So those could be could be adjusted more often than something like a social security tax rate. Remember that when, when we think of social security, we can think of it as a component of the FICA taxes, which is the Federal Insurance Contribution Act, which has basically two components which can be brought out or termed social security and Medicare. The social security component, the component we're looking at now, can also be called the old, old age survivors and disability uh, insurance. So note, if, if you see the terminology, uh, where it'll also be shorthand for, because it's often shorter to write uh, O-A-S-D-I in a worksheet. So it's important to know some of these kind of um, shorthands to write things and how things are going to be expressed so we know what we're talking about when we see both the worksheet and, and talk about things. So when we say uh, FICA is usually shorthand for Federal Insurance Contribution Act, that really has two components. And usually when people are speaking about it, they're going to be speaking about it in terms of the two components of Social Security and Medicare. Those are going to be the easiest way to say things verbally. When we put something into a worksheet, however, the uh, easiest thing to say in terms of the Social Security component uh, because Social Security is easier to say than OASDI, which is a hard acronym to remember, or to say the Old Age Survivors and Disability Insurance Act, which is not a difficult thing to say. So we typically say Social Security. When we put it into a worksheet, though, uh, the Social Security isn't the shortest way we can say it. We can use the acronym of OASDI. So oftentimes you're going to see it in this format when we, when we put it into our worksheet. So just note, it's going to be the Social Security component of the FICA taxes. So we've got the breakout when we look at this calculation. And the most confusing thing about Social Security is that we have an employer and an employee portion, and they're the same rates. And that really is a bit confusing when uh, we do the calculations to most people. It's not that difficult. It's just confusing to look at because we start to confuse the two rates um, together. So in other words, the employer is responsible to pay 6.2% of the employee wages and the employee is responsible to pay 6.2% of their wages. Now there is a cap too, and that's going to be uh, currently at 127,200. This could change, this you know changes over times with uh, cost of living and inflation type of adjustments. So we just need to know what the theory is on the cap so that we make sure we can look that up and apply the proper cap. So first, let's talk about these two components here. The law is basically set up, you can think of it kind of like a 401k type of contribution plan, although the withholding, is, it's different than a retirement plan in, in the way things are withheld. But with the withholding of the payments, the employer, you can think of it kind of like a matching. The employee is required to put in 6.2 into Social Security. And again, it's not being held by the government like a 401k plan. It's a different type of setup in terms of the payout and how that works uh, and how that funds are held. But in terms of paying into it, they're required to pay 6.2. And then the employer is retired, required to, in essence, kind of match that pay 6.2 from the employer funds as well. So when we consider the calculation, then uh, the, this por portion, the 6.2 for the employee, is coming out of the gross pay. So when we think of the payroll tax calculation or the net pay calculation for an employee, how much are they going to get from a paycheck? We're going to take their gross pay minus 6.2% or 0.062, if we convert this to a, a decimal, uh, out of their paycheck. 
to as one of the components to arrive at net pay. So from an employer perspective then, this isn't really a payroll tax to the employer. It's just us breaking out the employee's payment between one person they owe, meaning we're gonna give the employee the net check, we're gonna take this part out of their check and pay it to people they owe, which is in essence the government. So this is a payroll tax to the employee, but it's not really a payroll tax to the employer as is this part. This part, the 6.2 for the employer, is in essence a payroll tax. The calculation will be the same, meaning it's not based on the employer's income, it's based on the employee's income, and the employer has to pay 6.2% or 0.062 of uh, their income to the government. The reason this is more of an employer tax is because we're not going to include this as a deduction from the employee's wages to get to the net income. This is going to be coming out of the employer's checking account. It's not something that we're gonna say, hey, this is your wages and we took out your taxes, paid by your wages and paid it out for you. It's a tax that's over and above what we're paying in terms of wages that we have to pay or the employer has to pay. So because they're the same, they often get confused as if they're the same thing. Notice, you know, if we, the true tax that's gonna be paid is 12.4% here is what's really being paid. Um, so then we have the, the, ta the cap here, and this is another area that can cause confusion and can cause, um, you know, debate as to what the cap should do. This cap generally goes up over time. And the reason it's there, like basically what happens is if you get above this cap, then you stop paying the taxes on it, which seems counterintuitive to most people. So basically, if I if I, I pay 6.2%, the employer pays 6.2% up to the cap, in this case, at this time, 127,200. I think it's actually 128,400 in 2000. This, I think these are 2017. But in any case, the cap, the, the amount doesn't matter as much as, as, again, as long as we know the concept, we'll look up the whatever the current cap is and the, the cap does go up over time whereas these percentages will will typically be more constant over time so you would pay the 6.2 up to that cap and then you don't pay anymore which seems counterintuitive because you would think normally federal income taxes you pay more taxes as you as you get more income meaning you would think they would pay you know if you made more income you'd pay over 6.2 percent that's what a progressive system would do um, and and the re and there's so so there's a couple reasons for that here, and one is that uh, you know this system is a type of system where we're paying into a system that's going to give back benefits at retirement age, and um, so in other words, the more we pay in, the more we earn, 6.2 percent of whatever we earn goes up, means we're going to pay more taxes the high, the more we earn up to this cap. And so we're paying more and more whatever we earn. The benefits that we get at retirement will coincide to that in some way, meaning the people that put more money in to the system typically are going to get more benefits back. Now, the way the benefits work is it kind of inverse, meaning um, the way that calculation is the first few dollars that are put in, you get a bigger benefit, you get more money back. And then for each new contribution, up to the 127, you still get some benefit. You'll get a bigger Social Security check back because you put more in throughout the life of the program, but it'll be incrementally smaller. And then once you get up to like 127, this is this is just a um, very limited recap of these calculations as to the reason why a cap might be there. Once you get up to past a certain point, let's say it's 127, 200 of income, putting more money in wasn't isn't giving you any more benefit at the retirement to get the to get the benefits back at all and that's the point where we say where the cap that's one, that's one area or one factor into coming up with the cap component where should the cap be how high should the cap be well once there's no benefit in terms of um, receiving benefits at retirement is one factor to determine how high the cap is now, obviously, there's a lot of debate on the cap because if, uh, if the Social Security fund is not funded one way or is in trouble in some way, one way to collect more funds is to is to increase the cap. Uh, and then and that would put a higher tax on on wealthier individuals to put more money into the Social Security. So anyways, 
The cap is something that, uh, that can cause confusion, but it, in essence, it's a flat tax, really easy to calculate unless you hit the cap. And then you gotta, then you gotta know when you hit the cap. It's not hard to, to calculate the cap when you're talking about gross wages. Like if someone made 200,000, then obviously they'd only pay taxes on 127,200. But the thing that's difficult with social security is that we have to know when they hit that cap because we're paying people weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, and they're going to, if they hit that cap in the middle of October, then if we don't recognize the fact that we paid someone, you know, let's say $10,000 for this pay period in, in October, and we didn't recognize the fact that they went over the cap, then we're going to end up paying more social security than they owe because we're going to pay more than the cap of 127200 and uh, if that happens, that it's a problem with Social Security in a way that it's not as much a problem with federal income tax because Social Security is not going to be refunded uh, after we do the 1040 at the end of the year. Any overwithholding on the 1040 will be paid back after the 1040 calculation for federal income taxes. With, with uh, Social Security, it's a problem because that's typically not going to be the case and we'll, we will typically have to amend that uh, problem. So if we find that out, at the end of the year when we do our reconciliation process and we say oh man we took out more than the cap amount for this high income individual because we didn't realize they hit the cap then um you gotta make an adjustment for that typically accounting i don't know anyone in accounting